turned therapist. Our focus in these episodes is to humanize the athlete experience beyond the lines of their arena. In this podcast, we will explore the whole athlete, highlighting the mental, emotional, and social aspects of their journey. Hi, this is Sarah Meister from Millennium Counseling Center on the podcast today with Lainey. She is a clinical intern here at Millennium. For those who don't know me, I played college volleyball at the University of Missouri, and I'm the director of athlete wellness at Millennium Counseling Center and specialize working with athletes. We get it. I was one. We've been through it. (laughs) But I just want to, you know, have Lainey intro herself a little bit. Also former volleyball player too. So that's amazing. (laughs) Yes. Hi, my name is Lainey. I am a clinical intern here at Millennium Counseling Center. I'm currently a grad student at Adler University. And it's cool because I'm getting two degrees, one in just regular mental health counseling, but also in a human and sport performance degree. So that deals with mental skills, consulting in different areas. And I was also a former <laughs> Division One volleyball player. I played one year at UIC and then I transferred and played my other four years at Southeast Missouri because of COVID. And funny enough, Sarah, our Schools are actually playing each other two nights. <laughs> They're literally playing each other. And we were both like, wait, this is this is wild. I know, because it's two Missouri schools. There's not really a rival because we've never really played each other. But I know we play each other in football. So yeah. interesting to see who will win. Tonight. I know. We have to watch it. I will be watching. Go Mizzou. Go Tigers. <laughs> Go Red Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> so we just wanted to chat a little bit about something more of a fun topic, too, which is in regards to pregame rituals and you know, some of the things that we did that, you know, were successful or not successful and the importance of it. I mean, really, this is within the mental skills arena and focusing more on how to prepare for a game. And we talked a little bit about like superstitions as well and the things, you know, that work and don't work. I don't know, Lainey, did you have a very set pregame ritual when you were? Yeah, I had one for myself, but I will say just in general, my team was so superstitious. Like, yep, I'm sure it's not just a volleyball thing, but it's an athlete thing. (laughs) But like, we had to have the same partner standing in the same order, standing on the same side for warm up every time. I always had to do two left handed hits with my partner before I and like, so many just like random little things that like, I could see maybe like sometimes where like I was being a little too superstitious, but also like finding a balance of like, what is a routine you're going to do before every single game to kind of like get you mentally warmed up for the game, not just like that physical stretching too. So something I would do, like I'm like dancing, like having dance party, like getting all the energy out. So I was someone that was always kind of doing my own little dance like headphones in, listening to some songs that really pumped me up and kind of, especially just me as a leader, I was someone that was not ever coming off the court. So I really had to be zoned in and like being that pillar. So I was doing what I needed to do before games to make sure that I was on. I love that. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I understand the superstitions like so well, but I mean, I feel like music and and dancing like to get loose is so, I mean, it's just so important too. I think For a lot of athletes that are more mental, I considered myself more of a mental athlete. I would get anxiety, pregame anxiety all the time. And so kind of shaking out those nerves was like so helpful for for me. And I know for a lot of our teammates too. And I feel like it just brings the team together as well. But yeah, like there's just so many different things I feel like you could do within this space and then like within the mental skills, mental rituals, warmups, you name it. I'm laughing though, because like one of the things... (laughs) that I did like with my coach specifically. I mean, we had, there were superstitions on our team too, where I had to like, I was the last one out of the locker room always, always. And he had to high five me always. Like if we didn't get the high five, right? Like I would literally circle back and redo it. So like, this is also an unspoken thing that I had with my coach. It was like, everybody had their thing that they knew, whether it was spoken or not spoken, which is kind of interesting. But another thing I'll say that worked for me, which is funny at the time, you know, I'm like, 19, 20, 21, I didn't even really consider it, you know, a mental skill. I mean, now that we're therapists and working within the sport and performance space and mental health space, like, you know, these are legit mental skills. This is legitimately under the umbrella of mental performance. But I would actually, my mom actually did this. She would send me quotes before every single game and I would read it in the locker room and I would like really just set that intention. I would utilize each quote as an intention for the game. 
And so that always, one, it put me in a better mood. It helped motivate me, but it also just helped ground me and inspire me at the same time. So that was something I was doing with my mom for years, which was actually like the cutest thing ever. She would text me a quote and I would always wait for it before every single game. And it just helped calm my nerves. But I'm like, that is something that any athlete could put in place. It doesn't have to be a text from their parent, but you know, you guys could do that. But really just like setting an intention before each game, anything that's going to help ground you, whether it's just like, you know, the three C's, like staying cool, calm, and collected. Like that's my goal for this game or for practice you know, or being really intentional with my passing this game or finding some type of quote that you align with that you can kind of go back to, whether that's your why or anything that just helps you relax and that is meaningful specifically to you. Yeah. Those are all really great, tangible ideas. I love that your mom said you felt that <laughs> she really did. Cute. She sent me quotes. Yeah, I know. And I'm also thinking that like maybe in other people's situation, like another way is finding a teammate who you could do that with. Like me and one of my teammates, like we always had a a handshake, like right before the game, we did a specific handshake. So like maybe finding, you know, people on your team that are in the same position or a leader or like having a little buddy system that like you can create some of those like check-ins with another person that's also on your team. My question to you also was when you were mentioning about that, the pregame anxiety, like shaking it off. Did you actually physically like do a shake to like shake it off? Yes. 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 I even, you know, I've like mentioned this before, like I had a thing with my hands, like, and this is like a mental skill. It's something I also adapted in the game. So this, I mean, you can take pregame rituals or whatever that might be and also utilize them in practice. But I would, anytime I would make an air. I would literally use my hands like as if I was wiping it away, like shaking it off with my hands. And it just, all it did was help me refocus and just bring me back to the here and now. I'd also use keywords. I would say right here, right now. So it would immediately shift my focus to the present moment because you have like, what, 0.1 second to even think about anything that occurred in the last play, like it, especially with volleyball. So, I mean, you really need to shift in, in the moment and immediately. I really like that because I don't think I ever did like a physical, like somatic, like shaking all that, literally shaking the anxiety off, imagining just the anxiety (laughs) coming, leaving you as you're shaking it all off and then kind of like grounding and resetting in your moment. Like, okay, like ready to go. Like, here we go. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Scott Morton, (laughs) calling her out on this. You know, I was afforded the ability to have a sports psychologist when I was in college. And so that was incredible. She She was kind of like a pilot for our team. We didn't really have sports psychologists at Mizzou at that time. And so she came in, worked with our team, and that was incredible. Like it helped us in just so many ways. And so, yeah, a lot of that comes from her too, was even finding like a mental cue that worked for you because everybody's mental cue to refocus or to just come back to the here and now can look different. But for some reason, kind of like wiping my hands, it was like wiping my hands clean. I like viewed it as like a clean slate because every ball is next ball. Literally. Right. So that that just like helped. I mean, it really did just like make me lock in and kind of like focus on, you know, moving forward. Because I think, again, I was very mental. So anything I could do from like a physical somatic standpoint really helped me drop into my body and just clear the thought. I'm even thinking like, especially in those like high pressure game situations, like finding, you know, because in those high pressure situations, a lot of times both teams are equally as talented, but a lot of times it's who's mentally tougher, who's going to like push through in those moments of like unknown. So like for you as a team, like having, and maybe even you can create that like with the team is something you do as a team to ground yourself in those moments of high tension or high anxiety or something that can just help you back to the moment, next play, here and now. Yeah, 100%. I feel like, you know, having that from an individual standpoint is so important because you feel prepped, you feel prepared, right? But I think coming together as a team and doing something and also creating that as a team is like, is so beautiful. I mean, there's like team unity and all of that that comes with it. But you know, everybody has a say. And then it's like, yeah, it's your pregame ritual. And like the, I mean, you guys just get hyped together and everybody's more prepared. But yeah, even, you know, when mistakes are made, like coming together as a team or knowing what to say or how to manage that or how to handle that in the moment collectively, I think could be really helpful. I mean, did you see that with your team? Was there anything you guys ever did? 
on the court or even before it? Well, so I was a captain for three years. Like I'm always in that mindset of like being the leader and making sure because I was that person that people look to during times of high stress. Totally. I'm even thinking of an, a real example. It's the conference championship. This set, 14-13, we're winning by one. Called a timeout. I'm the outside hitter. I'm the captain. We go on the timeout. Nothing else was said in the timeout except, okay, we're going to get a good pass. We're going to get a good set. We're going to set Laney. And Laney, you are going to get the kill and we're going to win. And that's how it's going to happen. Okay, ready, break. <laughs> and at that we moment, that. we love those moments. Every single one of my teammates turned to me to see like how I would react how in that you moment. Yeah. How I responded. And I I was internally freaking out. Freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> but externally, like knowing that like I was gonna be that pillar of like, okay, we got this, guys. Like the whole crowd standing and cheering right now on their feet, but like I'm showing you that like it's okay to kind of like take that anxiety of the unknown and use it for like a motivating factor. Wow. Okay. I love that example. That is also stressful. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, it's, I feel like that's one of the coolest things about athletes is like our ability to just adapt and to like literally face fear head on sometimes because we have no choice but to literally you have no choice but to, but I just feel like that's such a great example of being like, okay, internally, you might be feeling something, but how we show up externally, what we do can really like make a break that moment or also be reflective of the team because it's energy and people feel that people can feel that. And I mean, the outcome was that I did get the kill. So, but my mindset going into it was like, I wasn't fearful. I wasn't thinking like, I can't do this. I'm going to mess up. It was like, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to go for it. I'm, this is my last game as a senior. Like I'm leaving it all out there. So again, like reframing your mindset, especially in those moments of like high anxiety of like using that, like you're an athlete for a reason. You're at this high level playing, being a start for a reason. So like taking that into account and like really using that to motivate you. Oh, I love that. Okay, you're making me think. I know we were talking more about the pregame rituals, but now I'm thinking of more in the game specifically too, because I feel like any type of pregame ritual, like so important, right? To get you into that mindset, like that Lainey's talking about. But how do we carry that through the game? <laughs> Which is like that next piece that she just expressed. But I'm thinking too, back to a time, and I've seen this, you know, I've seen this with athletes I work with. I've also seen this with myself and my teammates is like, you make an error, okay? And then from there, there's this internalized feeling of don't set me the ball or, you know, don't pass to me. We kind of, we play scared instead of like attacking that fear, like really, again, facing it head on. But I remember like a technique to something I would have to do because you felt the air, I shank a pass and I would have to regroup really quickly. And I would tell myself or I'd say it out loud. I'm like, serve me the ball, serve me the ball again serve me the ball again, because you're really putting yourself back into that state of being like, I can do this. Like I can, yeah, I can face this fear head on instead of hiding from it or behind it, playing small or in turn playing scared. And I'm also thinking like maybe in situations where like it is hard for someone to be like, serve Serve me me the the ball ball. because maybe you just shanked past 10 balls. Yeah. So maybe you're not feeling that, but Also reframing that of like, okay, internally, I know maybe I'm not having the best passing day and that's okay. I'm not supposed to have a great passing day, but if I'm not going, what are other ways I can help? Like I can help cheer better or I can go like watch the play when the other team is hitting. Like there's other ways that if I'm maybe not feeling very confident in my mindset of skill of what other ways I can still contribute to the team when I'm maybe not having the strongest mindset that day. I love that. I completely agree. I feel like from a, you know, we're talking very volleyball standpoint right (laughs) now, but yeah, like your contribution isn't just one thing on the team. Like you can always come back in different ways. And, you know, if you know you can carry yourself or the team in a different way, like remind yourself of that too. I feel like that helps rebuild confidence in that moment as well. Like, okay, shank to pass or the pass is pretty rough, right? You better believe I'm going to be covering every single ball or, you know, I will be diving for every single ball on the defense. So like you said, there's a lot of ways to 
come back <laughs> from that too. Yeah, I don't know. Lainey, do you have anything else to add? Anything that like, anything else that's coming up for you you can think of? Not really, but I feel this was like a good little yeah. info dump. Two volleyball players that haven't got to sit down and talk yet. I know, I know. This is great because we're really talking about volleyball too. It make, it's making me miss it a ton. But yeah, I feel like, you know, again, we're kind of throwing a lot out here, but you know, this is for a resource for you guys. So if there's something that you like here, like take it, try it, utilize it. And again, this is just to be helpful and supportive. And what works, works. And what doesn't work, that's okay too. You kind of have to experiment with these types of methodologies, techniques, mental skills, you name it, reframing in order for something to stick and continue to work out in the way that it's starting to work out for you. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's all we got today. Yeah. And thank you all. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>